remember the cardio is necessary when you're trying to lean down, you know, increase metabolism. I prefer to do it either first thing in the morning or after the weight training session. Pay attention to that. End of every workout, I always do some form of cardio. Don't do that. The best thing you can do after a workout is go home and eat and relax because that's how growth happens. What's up, guys, and welcome to my channel. My name is Lieutenant Snowwheel, aka Professor Bulkenberg. And this is a really interesting thing that I found about those science-based lifters. They all hate cardio. So first, I'm not gonna explain in this video why cardio is so important, especially if you are just a recreational lifter. I'm gonna make a fully dedicated video on this topic. But trust me, bro, I experimented with lifting without doing any cardio for a long period of time. And I tell you this, it sucks, surprisingly. And even if you're talking about professional bodybuilders, and I'm talking about the legends, guys like Ronnie Coleman, Jay Collar, Phil Heath, Nasser, and others, what they did is that they used to do multiple hours of cardio each day. But for a natural recreational lifter, cardio is even more important. And all the science-based lifters, they never push this idea of cardio and how important it is. And they don't really focus on cardio that much, which I can't understand. It's like, you know, it's all about lifting. But anyway, cardio is important. But they would rather spend more time explaining why this you know, exercise hidden lats with this angle is more optimal what handle to choose, which are absolutely minor nuances. Even if they make a difference, just like literally 0.1% of a difference, right? And they completely miss this crucial component of a healthy lifestyle, which is cardio. So shame on them. And when they talk about cardio, they focus primarily on fat burn, which, like, yeah, got it. Cardio will make a difference, but it's not that huge. And cardio is not about that. Cardio is about, what a surprise, cardio. Yeah, the main goal of any kind of cardio is to improve your cardiovascular system. Second thing that they got wrong is that they analyze cardio from a bodybuilding standpoint. And I'm talking about bodybuilding not as a side effect of lifting. I'm talking about bodybuilding as a professional sport, guys. So they judge cardio activities from a competitive bodybuilder standpoint of view, which makes absolutely zero sense. Because how many people who hit the gym are competitive bodybuilders? 0.0000001%? So why do we care about competitive bodybuilding so much? And what all the science-based lifters do is that they promote this low intensity cardio. And I'm the guy who will advocate for this low intensity cardio. So do this as much as possible throughout the day, but not in a gym. Because why do you want to waste time in a gym? Seriously, just drive into a gym and walk on a treadmill. So what I think of low intensity cardio is that you don't want to do it in a gym. You want to do it outside the gym, just move more throughout the day. So in a gym, you don't want to waste time. So what you can do is that you can hit this 10, 15 minutes high intensity cardio after you already finish your training session. And as we already heard in the intro of this video, Dr. Mike said that you shouldn't do it because you'll ruin your gains. After lifting, I wouldn't do cardio because you're deprioritizing the recovery and growth process and prioritizing getting better at something else. <sighs> Guys, I always thought that muscle growth is a very long-term process. It takes literally weeks or even months, you know, to build muscles, but it turned out it was wrong. Dr. Mike said that probably you grow your muscles after you finish your workout during like 30 minutes. And if you hit a cardio session during this like 30 to like 20 minutes, you like say goodbye to your gains. Like what kind of logic is this? Seriously, guys, another bizarre thing that you can find in this science-based lifting community when they talk about cardio is this magical number of 130 BPM heart rate. So if you go above this 130 BPM, you will ruin your recovery. How did they come up with this number? Seriously, what, what are we even talking about? Like, you really think that if I hit a very intense cardio, let's just say 190 BPM, for just two minutes, it's gonna affect my recovery more 
than if I covered like 70 kilometers during the day by just walking. This is like, it's not just about heart rate, but also about how long you do cardio. You know what I'm saying? And what does 130 BPM even stand for? Are they talking about pulse zones? But it doesn't make any sense because pulse zones are highly individual. First and foremost. And second thing, which is really important. For instance, even have a look at trail runners. For instance, guys, there are races that can last more than even 20 hours. But to be able to run this long, they should keep their BPM at some limit. And for each one, it is individual, as I said. So, for instance, if I run at 139 BPM, I can last for like 20 hours. I mean, I can't just imagine if I were a trail runner. But if I increase my heart rate by just like 5, 6, and it's like 145 uh, BPM since now, I will be gassed out so quick. Why is it happening? Once you're surpassing this threshold, you're starting to produce more like toes that you're able to recycle. So this is why is it so important for them, for instance. But if you want to just train cardio, what, what's, the freaking, what's the freaking point of this 130 BPM or like 110 to 130 BPM zone? Is it about like, you know, fat burning myth? You know, when it's like during this pulse zone, you burn fat. Like, yeah, I got it. But you do guys realize that we're talking about fat that's being used during a cardio activity is not the same fat that your intermuscular, like just body fat, because it's a different story. And even if you are at this, you know, low pulse zone, you'll still be using around 60 or 70 percent of your energy from glycogen, no matter how trained you are, guys. So what is those numbers of 110 to 130 BPM are even all about? This doesn't make any freaking sense. So guys, why is it happening? Why all these science-based lifters just talking bullshit about cardio? The reason is simple. Because cardio is hard, man. Cardio sucks. And science-based lifters don't like what's hard. Because most of the science-based lifters will tell you that this science-based lifting is a shortcut. So they care about making gains, but the lifting process for them is something that sucks, that is hard, and that you have to do but it's a very wrong perception guys and all the science-based lifters they use science but guys as already said science doesn't give you any answer on how to train but they use this science okay to make an excuse about something like you know free weights versus machines all the real deals all the experienced lifters they know that free weights are superior to machines, but the science-based lifter will tell you something. No, actually, machines are more optimal or fatigue to stimulus ratio, some kind of crap like this. Or, you know, why do they train with strict form? Because it's easier to train with a strict form. Because when you grind those, you know, 20 kilo dumbbells doing hammer curls, like, okay, it's relatively hard. But when you grab those, you know, 40 kilo hammer curls and just start to cheat curl it, it's like 10 times harder, guys. This is what I'm saying. This is why they're all against those unorthodox lifts. So they don't like to struggle. They don't like to like push themselves beyond limits. And this is why they hate cardio. Because guys, I'm telling you this. Cardio sucks the most. Even the craziest, the heaviest, the hardest Zorcher deadlifts or some crazy stuff like this is not going to be as hard as some high-intensity cardio, guys. And when you're about to puke, when you're about to cough your lungs out, when your heart's about to explode, you know what I'm saying? And I've never seen a guy in my life who trains like a real science-based lifter doing all this, you know, optimal exercises and who does some high-intensity cardio. Never. If it's cardio, it's something like treadmill walk or like low-intensity cycling, some crap like this. But I'm telling you this, guys. In my gym, there are two guys who train CrossFit in a really, really intense way. You know what I'm saying? Just screaming, blasting all this, you know, CrossFit exercises, bottle of sweats all over the place. And they don't train like, you know, hypertrophy optimal. They don't train for strength. But what they do is that they go balls to the wall. And I'm telling you this, they are more jacked than 95% that you can meet in a gym. And on top of all that, they are healthier and more fit than 99.999% people in the gym. So if you pick a random guy like this, he'll be more fit and healthier than let's just say 
the biggest, one of the biggest fitness gurus out there, Dr. Mike, who freaking surgically removed fat. Like, can you imagine it? You know, fitness community is not about health. It's not about fitness, really. What is this? Like, it's a freaking marketing scheme. So it's up to you guys. You see, objectively, most of people in a gym, they're not super jacked. Let's be honest. And it's up to you whether you be not jacked, but at least fit and healthy doing cardio. Or you be obsessed with science-based lifting, still be not jacked. And on top of all that, not fit and not healthy and have absolutely crappy and worst cardiovascular system, lack of mobility, flexibility, and absolutely unable to f be freaking snap and move, you know, and jump around or something. So why did I make this video? Because I'm sick and tired of this bullshit that we call science-based lifting or optimal training nowadays. But we see that already so many people consider this science-based lifting is some sort of joke. You know, it's nothing but a trend. As many trends in fitness community, in fitness industry over the last decades already petered out, and the same thing is happening, we see the same things happening with science-based lifting. And I assume that within like 5 and 10 years, people will think of science-based lifting as something like kind of meme. So there are lots of things that science-based lifting got wrong, and one of them is cardio and I think nobody actually talked about this so this is why I made this video and you might ask okay but what's the best cardio activity out there how to train cardio the most effective way and yada 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 guys we'll talk about this in my future dedicated videos so stay tuned subscribe to this channel so you won't miss those videos and I'll see you later